Okay, what is up, everybody? Um, just going to give a quick update on my Rudder True Tide Mott Sea Peptide kind of stack uh, I've had going for the last two months. Um, so, yeah, it's been pretty interesting. I, I started kind of the last week of July, went into August, obviously now September, so it's been almost exactly two months uh, since I started. Um, so I've got, I record my weight pretty much every day unless I'm out of town. I, I record my weight every morning as soon as I wake up, so I kind of have a, a baseline of my weight. I've um, been doing that for, for a long time, but um, here I'll kind of show you how my weight fluctuated. Um, I did have blood work from before and after. I'm not going to show all my blood work, but the kind of the interesting ones uh, that stuck out uh, and just like some photos. So it's only been two months. I have a pretty drastic change, I would say so. So, and, and bear with me here while I uh, try out some new video recording stuff here. So first things first, the, the weight fluctuation here. Um, so I guess I'll start out by saying when I first went on uh, this stack, uh, I had just been kind of through a weight loss journey through almost six months um, with no peptides, no anything, just kind of old school, uh, <laughs> which was pretty torturous. So I, I put myself through about uh, from 220-ish pounds down to about 186. Um, so that ended up June 20th. I ended that diet. So I took about a month off to just kind of uh, reverse diet I guess you could say but slowly kind of build up just my appetite again you know when you're starving yourself for for a long time and going through a big weight loss journey uh, you know your metabolism kind of plummets your your appetite plummets your stuff your feels like your stomach your stomach shrinks um, so I spent those four weeks just kind of like eating gradually more and more and more kind of building up that so by July 21st or July 20th, I forget the exact first day of my first kind of injection with both MOTC and uh, Retta. And mind you, this is one milligram of, of Retta to start. Obviously, didn't want to go crazy. Um, but so I, I kind of put myself from 186 starting out of a 197. So from the lowest point of my previous diet, I had already bounced back up about 10 pounds. Um, so once I started dosing, as you can see pretty pretty quickly, as with I think common knowledge, you know, as soon as you inject this stuff, you, you kind of will drop weight pretty pretty quickly. Um, so, you know, I, I dropped that weight pretty fast, probably a quick, who knows, I, I obviously can't really remember exactly what I was doing, but for the most part, um, diet, exercise, everything stayed the same. But I find when I see these big spikes in my weight, um, they're generally two, one of two things. Either I ate sugar, like like candy, so just like straight glucose, fructose, sucralose, whatever. Um, so that just filled up, you know, glucogen in my body. Um, th that glucose stores in the muscles. Who knows? But I find those huge spikes kind of overnight and then come back down. That's generally if I've eaten sugar. I don't eat a ton, um, you know, maybe the, the girlfriend's over, went to the movies, who, who knows what happened. Uh, or it's salt retention, so if I had something really salty for dinner, um, or maybe like some pho, some soup or something, you'll see these big water retention, kind of sodium retention, weight spikes. So outside of that, let's just look at the bigger picture here. So right off the bat, uh, within like, looks like, you know, the first week, less than, less than two weeks, uh, dropped you know seven pounds really really quick um, so at this point you know because I just came off um, a pretty long diet and stuff you know I had to kind of retrain myself um, to start eating again so pretty quick I was like okay I got to turn this around and so I went up from probably eating in in and around 2500 calories to bumping up to like 3500 sometimes even 4000 calories just really trying to see if I could outwork Motsi read a true tide, so I um, yeah, I was just fucking eating. This is all healthy food, too. This wasn't no fucking dirty ball McDonald's bullshit. This was really almost all same as when I dieted chicken and rice. Um, I added a lot more uh, oils, butters, um, I put a lot of honey on things, so um, fat free Greek yogurt, frozen berries, yo or honey was a big mainstay. Um, making smoothies in the mornings with mixed berries, banana, 
uh, protein powder. I put um, an ounce or an ounce and a half of olive oil in my smoothies in this morning. Just again, just to add those really easy, easy calories. So over the month of August, or sorry, uh, yeah, pretty much from the beginning of August to August 20th, I was just, you know, really trying to consume calories, really trying to outwork the Reta, the Motsi, and, and just kind of like see how powerful it was to kind of keep that in bay. So pretty gradual increase over time, which is good. Um, you know, a couple big spikes here. Then I was really pushing the calories here and it, it just really kind of took off. <laughs> so it was pretty interesting to kind of outwork uh, or out eat, I should say, um, the Reta, at least at that dose. Um, there wasn't really much appetite suppression. I will say the, with these, they call it the gastric emptying slows down. So I would say I've always been a really good eater, hence why I gained so much weight previously and needed to start this journey. Um, I've never really had a problem eating. <laughs> I love food, I'll eat a lot of food, so I've never really had an issue with that side of stuff. <laughs> um, but as soon as you go on these kind of GLP-1, it is, I wouldn't say the appetite, appetite suppression was super noticeable, but the slowing of your digestion was quite noticeable. So when I would eat food previously, I, I generally, you can feel it digest pretty quick. Um, you know, let's say you eat four hours before bed without these things on, you know, by the time you get to bed four hours later, depending on what you're eating, of course, and, and depending on your genetics and stuff, but I would generally feel pretty fine after that. Um, but with this, I, f I, I could already feel it was slowing down my digestion quite a bit, which is part of the mechanism. So that that's probably what I noticed more than anything. So once I hit August 20th, so my four week mark, uh, I just kind of went back to normal. I, I, you know, purposefully switched to, you know, eating a lot of calories on purpose to just going about my normal day, eating as a normal person, which is probably in the 2,500 to 3,000 calorie range, give or take, you know, depending if I'm super busy and I, you know, miss some snacks here and there, I'm probably in the 2,500. And then certain days where I'm a little bit more cognizant, uh, I'll probably be eating in that 2,800 kind of realm. Um, I'm not really tracking as much as I used to. Again, for doing that for six months, it's nice to just take a mental break from this. But again, pretty quickly, once I stopped purposefully eating, really big, quick drop. Um, drop off there in in weight you know there was two, two or three so those eight pounds dropped in, in a matter of a couple of days um, spike up again probably probably ate some uh, a lot of salt or, or some sugar there and then just really been gradually down and then so what I'll and I'll, I'll be transparent the last week so it's Monday today pretty much starting last Monday so the last seven days um, I threw in uh, oral SLUPP332. Um, that's kind of the last mitochondrial peptide of the uh, <laughs> the Trinity Force peptide stack that has kind of come popular with MOTC, um, methylene blue, and SLUPP332. It's been really hard to get a hold of, so uh, I finally got it. I wanted to toss it in, see if it did anything. I wouldn't say there was one day where I had almost like a almost like the jitters. Uh, and that's dosing at 10 milligrams orally. Um, dosing for that has been all over the place. So I'm not really sure who to believe. You know, people are like 500 micrograms and I'm fucking blah, blah, blah. And then you got guys like Gorilla Chemist around 400 milligrams um, and saying the same thing. So this peptide I think is either it's very individualistic um, or it's a lot of smoke and mirrors and people are just lying or who knows, I've followed Dr. Dean St. Mart about this and he's very adamant that you need to have your mitochondria health pretty much, you know, really in check in order for this to work. So I've, even before I started MOTC, the SLU was part of the game plan. So I, I have taken the last number of months to optimize mitochondria health. And so I'm, I'm hoping that that was a player in this kind of like last steep fall off. It could just be uh, again, like any of the other fall-offs, but the, the red of the Motsi, SLU. Um, I guess what I'll take away from this is that if you're eating and you're running away with it, obviously you're still going to gain weight on Reddit Uh Again, one milligram 
this was not this was my first time doing this uh, type of weight loss uh, peptide so by all means um, you know if you're up in the four 10 milligram doses that people have been running this for a long time um, where you're gonna get a lot more appetite suppression this probably it's probably a little bit harder to outrun it but point being made that you can still gain weight on these uh, at smaller doses but if you just go back eating normally um, as per you know finding that kind of homeostasis where you're just eating and you're feeling happy and you're feeling comfortable because uh, even eating normally I was eating snacks you know I, I, again I eat pretty pretty healthy these days um, so there wasn't really any like candy binges or any of that bullshit um, if I do get really a good hankering especially if you know if you get a little THC in your blood and you get the munchies um, diet diet soda caffeine free diet coke for me is is um, you know really gets that sweet tooth off you without adding calories so uh, little things like that um, you know so once I went back to normal dieting pff, the weight's just been falling off um, and so I did take pictures from start to finish as well so um, let's pop that off we'll go so first photo so and this is only about four weeks out of uh, after a, a six month diet, so a pretty long diet, so I was already pretty lean. This is about, I think we said 197, um, 10 pounds up from my lowest weight uh, ever. So pretty lean, nothing, you know, nothing crazy, but um, I, I was feeling pretty good then. Again, about four weeks after a, a pretty harsh diet, I, I felt really good physically, um, feeling lighter, but still having that, having some body weight on you. So popping in now to, to August, You'll you'll see the fuck got pretty fluffy. So this is only four weeks away from that last photo, um, which is pretty wild if you think about it. So that's four weeks on you know close to 3,500 calories. You know you can you can put on that much fluff in four weeks, which. Um, you know just think about people that aren't as cognizant about calorie intake or think about you know if you just go and again I know this because this was my previous life like I used to just go for a couple beers go for chicken wings do all this and do that every week a couple times a week I was putting on that kind of fluff and this was going to the gym five days a week working out hard so you know it was probably building a good amount of muscle in this kind of like four week bulk um, but what that was pretty noticeable this is 200 and what was it just over 200 pounds so that's you know from from my lowest weight of 186 in july you know we're up 15 pounds in two months which is which is pretty wild so um coming down we'll go now to this was pretty much just two days ago three days ago so weight is almost the exact same still a little bit more fluffy uh, than previous but you know let's let's give myself the benefit of the doubt here and say I put on you know two pounds of muscle in, in those two months uh, because I did a bit of bulk I was working out pretty hard uh, not a lot of change though um, probably just less body hair by the looks of it <laughs> um, but so that that you know there wasn't really much I was looking to do in terms of body composition but I just wanted to show the that kind of start middle and, and end to show again this is this is four weeks after the previous photo too so you you got that little bit of extra fluff in four weeks but then in another four weeks it basically disappeared so pretty drastic changes for, for talking four weeks of separation between all this stuff um so these things do can work pretty pretty quickly um so i'm gonna obviously keep rolling this i'm gonna bounce up to two milligrams uh next week i have surgery in like two days um so nothing's gonna change until I'm back from the surgery and stuff like that but so last but la last but not least I wanted to talk just about the uh, blood work I got too so because of the surgery I had to get blood work um, and this was kind of the most compelling part of everything um, let's bring this up here so my hemoglobin generally speaking has always been pretty good uh, I thought I had a third one in here somewhere which, but whatever, not a big deal. Um, but yeah, so four weeks. So June June seventeenth is essentially right before my diet ended. 
uh, my original diet ended. So th this is um, right when I started, this is the blood work I got to do my TRT. So it was actually looking pretty good then. Um, you know, five months later, dieting, eating really well, not much change. Um, but then four weeks after I got under retrotide, you know, three point change. I'm not gonna say that's his life changing, but you know, retrotide in its essence was made as a diabetic drug. Um, so this right here, you know, I, this isn't a life changing difference in A1C, um, but for someone that's, if you're at 5.7 and you come down to 5.4, 5.8, this is in this is in four weeks. I haven't got my A1C done again yet. Um, obviously I, we'll see where it's at. I, I don't know what my next blood work is, but in four weeks you can drop, you know, three points off your A1C. That goes, they can be pre-diabetic to normal range. That, that was pretty drastic, I personally think. Um, for someone, for someone that could be in a dangerous, you know, insulin sensitivity, pre-diabetic state, you, you hop on this drug and within four weeks you're, you're, at, you're in the healthy range and then you continue that and you get back into, you know, you go from 5.7 to 5.0 and you lose, it's not always about losing weight. And I think a lot of people get really obsessed with personal image. Um, which don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm just as much to blame as anybody else. But this right here, you know, this is, this is really the meat and potatoes of these drugs as well. Like I never, I wasn't even in a bad state to begin with. I was already doing really well, but to kind of just see that change so quickly, um, really kind of gives me hope or at least just reinforces the fact that these drugs do work really well for, for all of, you know, the reasons that they should. But um, you know, if I have family members or I have, or I have friends that are, you know, pre-diabetic or, or have this type of issue, um, I think this is something that can, can really, really help, um, regardless of the weight loss. Um, so anyway, that's the update on Reditrutide for me. And this is also my first time ever recording on one of these types of kind of streaming platforms with using images and stuff love the office in the background don't you um maybe I'll, I'll learn how to be a proper podcast or streamer one of these days and get these things out but for anyone looking to do or try red a true tide um yeah i can't say enough good things about my experience i haven't had like really any side effects i haven't really had any negative anything negative to say about it in terms of what it's done to me other than really you know you just lose weight, <laughs> you know, if you just don't do anything. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to be interested, you know, I'm, I'm pretty lean. I'm, you, get, you guys just saw the photos. I'm, I'm in the, I don't know, definitely sub 20% body fat. Uh, I hold most of my body fat on my back, not my front. So it, it sometimes can be a bit deceiving, but I, I would imagine I'm in the 18, between 15 and 20. We'll just give it that ballpark body fat percentage. Um, so once the surgery is over, I'm, going to go into an even harder cut. I wouldn't say harder, but I'm going to cut even more body fat. Uh, I'm at a very healthy number right now, but I do plan on going into like a proper muscle building bulk come January. Um, so I do want to kind of get down to at least 10, if not sub 10% body fat by Christmas. Um, not for anything other than once I do start bulking, I just don't want to put on that. You saw how much fluff I put on in four weeks. So if I can get down in that sub 10, you know, eight, nine, 10% body fat, uh, before the bulk, that'll just give you a little bit more runway. So you don't put on too much fat right away, uh, when you're, when you're in a bulk. So, um, yeah, I'm going to give another couple update post surgery, uh, cause I have a brand new peptide stack, uh, that I'm going to be running after that post that for healing. Um, and then we'll talk about peptides that and how we're all going to combine all the peptides, TRT, everything all in one. And, uh, I'll just kind of talk about results after that. So anyway, appreciate you guys listening. Uh, if you guys have any questions, comment below or whatever, uh, just toss me a line and we'll talk. Thanks.